I'm talking about the world Christopher Columbus did not discover. But I'm talking about what Christopher Columbus set in motion because he set in motion in his period set in motion an act of criminality that influences our very life today. It laid the basis for Western racism. It laid the basis for misconceptions about people. It laid the basis for extensive use of organized religion as a rationale for the enslavement of people. It's a reoccurring event in history. And it told us as if nothing has told us before that history is never old. Everything that ever happens continues to happen. What we are dealing with now is more than the second rise of Europe. We're dealing with the rise of a concept that is taking hold of the mind of most of the world and people throughout the world are now fighting to get away from that concept and a whole lot of people are prisoners to that concept. We're dealing with the reason certain things looked as though they were going to succeed and did not succeed. We're actually dealing with the, the reason why the African independent explosion did not culminate in independence. Why the civil rights movement did not culminate in any civil rights. Why the Caribbean Federation did not culminate in any independence from Caribbean states. Independence in name only. Flag independence but actual economic independence, they are more dependent now than they were at the height of colonialism. It, it, it set in motion the exposure of the fact that once you are oppressed and once certain information is kept from you, you begin to experience some confusion about what independence consists of. Now, let's look at the world before Columbus, then let's pick up Columbus's world and look at his impact on the Americans and look at the world he did not discover. But what he actually did, and he should be credited for this, he set in motion the exploitation of two continents for European domination. He never set foot on North America or South America. He set in motion an attitude that is still with us, a concept called divine quite right, and something else called manifest destiny. The assumption because Europeans had the ships and the basic technology, they had the right to go into other people's country, exploit their mineral resources, to take and make their women at will. And they did all of this in the name of a God that they said was merciful and kind. All of them using Western Orient religions, and that include the Arabs, made their God ungodly. Now, 
the role of religions in the domination and the destruction of African civilization, all of them, and there is no exception, Islam being as ruthless as all the rest of them, the role of religions in this matter is so shameful, no matter how you look at it, the picture is negative, because all of them did more harm been good. Now let's look at the world 1400 to 1600 before we come to what is called the new world that was not new at all. During the crusades the Europeans had exploited each other to the point where Europe was about to explode within itself. The Catholic Church in its need for funds to build these massive cathedrals and to support parasitic priests had begun to preach the people to the point where they began to have some serious questions about the role of the church. The church, it is desired to get still more money from the people, created something called pregatory. Now, when you died, you didn't go directly to heaven. You went to pregatory, and people had to pray you from pregatory into heaven. <laughs> And the more money you gave the priest, the harder, the quicker he prayed to get grandma and uncle from purgatory into heaven. It was a religious con game played on the people of Europe. They were beginning to discover this con game to the point out of anger Europe was about to explode within itself. Then a fortunate incident would happen. All beat, beatnik hermit Peter came across Europe saying that the infidel Arabs were barring Europeans from visiting the holy places and observing the Holy Grail and the places of the crucifixion. Now, Michael Bradley, in a still to be published book, have proven that there was no Holy Grail in the first place, it wasn't lost in the second place. And it wasn't what they thought it was in the third place. Now, the Pope saw a reason he could use to cut down on all of this anger against the church. The propaganda swept through Europe that they had to move across Europe in a crusade to rescue this mythological holy grail that one lost in the first place. <laughs> now they started to march, moving across Europe to the rescue. But in the moving across Europe, they forgot the pent up anger against the church. And this gave the church a lease on life that would last until the rise of Martin Luther, who would challenge him again and lay the basis of Protestantism. Now, there were many crusades, many reasons for people going on crusade, none of which had anything to do with religion or God. Now, the way the story is presented to you in school, you think it has something to do 
with holiness. It has something to do with European power and Europe rising from the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. Europe search for something outside of Europe to eat. European emotionalism venting itself on people outside of Europe. Europe trying to find a scapegoat for its own anger. Europe trying to defect the effect of its own enslavement of other Europeans. Now they would call it feudalism, but it was enslavement. European enslavement of other Europeans. Now, while the Crusades won the battles in the movie Cecil B. DeMille 